Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this workshop on uh, pedagogy for effective use of ICT in engineering education. We have about 140 remote centers that have joined, and a warm welcome to all of you. And we hope to be with you for the next four weeks, not just three days now, but three days now, a week online, another three days, and another week. The first session today will be by Professor D.B. Fatuk from the Computer Science and Engineering Department of IIT Bombay. And Professor Fatuk doesn't need any introduction at all to this audience. He is the uh, PI and the chief architect of the Teach 10,000 Teachers program. And you would have seen him perhaps in many other workshops. So I'll uh, hand over the mic to him. He will deliver the inaugural session. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Sana. And good morning and welcome to all of you. So in this introductory session, I wish to tell you about the Indian efforts in using ICT in education, particularly in engineering education. The objectives, of course, are to enhance and improve the quality and enhance the reach of education using ICT. Now, you note that there are three things which are required in the educational process which are fundamental. One is, of course, the good quality content. The second is dissemination problem in which you need to take these contents to people. The third is the access problem in which the learners need to affordably access these contents which are being disseminated from their own place of work. If we regard these three as the fundamental pillars of use of ICT in education, then there is a fourth and the most important factor, which is the glue which combines all these three. And this glue is actually the teaching and the learning that happens in our educational institutions currently, as well as learning that happens when the students or learners attempt to learn things on their own using the affordable access that has been provided. What I wish to emphasize is that the role of teachers will continue to be paramount in one, taking the advantage of the technology to all learners, two, to be mentors to the learners in the process of self-learning, and three, blend the technology efforts in the conventional education processes that obtain in our colleges today. It is in this context that we should see how we have tried to innovate and develop affordable solutions. We have tried to use and enhance open source content and software tools. And we have initiated MOOCs and we are planning to deploy them on large scale. So these are the essentials of the Indian efforts. Let us very quickly go through the details of some of these. First and foremost, we must appreciate the problem of scale in India. All of you would be familiar with this, but just to rekindle your memory, we have one of the lowest gross enrollment ratios in the world in higher education. Today, we have about 20 million students in higher educational institutions. The proposed increase in gross enrollment ratio will have about 30 million. That is only 3 crore people, by the way. Out of these, 1.25 million students annually enroll in about 3,500 engineering colleges and 1,500 other professional colleges. As opposed to this, 20 million students study in nine standard alone in the school. And please understand this gigantic figure. 352 million Indians are younger than 14 years. Out of these, 100 million Indians are younger than four years. Now, all these people, 352 million people, are waiting to receive high quality education at the place wherever they are trying to learn. That is the gigantic challenge. No other country, by the way, has this kind of challenge, including China, which is slightly an aging society. It has less number of younger people striving to learn something new. Let us look at the three pillars, as I mentioned. First, the content. You must be aware of the National Mission on Education through ICT. Under this, the National Program on Technology Enabled Learning, or NPTEL, has created over 1,200 courses Originally, these were created as lectures, which are video recorded, or web lectures, etc., etc. 
it was found that while the content were open sourced and people were able to access them, they were not accessing them because students in the regular engineering colleges felt that they were not getting material which was relevant for their own syllabus and their own examination. NPTEL in its second phase is correcting that process. It is actually factoring the conventional uh, examination pattern and the syllabi obtaining in various universities and are redesigning these. There is an important initiative on spoken tutorials taken by my colleague, Professor Kannan Maudgalya. Those of you who are interested can see the spoken tutorials website. It's an exciting mechanism of preparing a low payload content because it does not have video of the teacher. It has only the slides and the audio uh, presentation. It's a 10 minute tutorial designed on the Khan Academy style, but because it is a low payload, low volume uh, material, it can be downloaded in terms of umpteen such tutorials forming a continuum of a course. Currently, they emphasize training people in open source software, but this technology is being adopted by our T10KT workshops and others, including our MOOCs preparation to prepare low payload uh, video uh, recorded uh, lectures or explanations, etc. There is an important initiative on virtual labs, which permits people to conduct laboratory experiments from wherever they are, although they might not have access to the costly equipment which is required to conduct those labs. A large number of institutions, typically led by all IITs, have been participating in it. This important initiative is coordinated by IIT Delhi. And I would urge all teachers who are attending this workshop and to tell their colleagues also to try and explore these exciting virtual labs which will make it possible for students to understand things better even though they might not have the experimentation facilities in their own colleges. Let us look at the dissemination problem. This is being solved by the National Knowledge Network which provides connectivity to hundreds of universities and thousands of colleges. Interestingly, fiber connectivity is being established to 100,000 panchayats. We know we have 6 lakh villages and 1 lakh panchayats. So each panchayat, each block will actually have a fiber connection within the next one and a half years. More importantly, the endpoint will not just be panchayat, but the endpoint will be connecting one school and one hospital in each panchayat. So within about two years, we would have very high bandwidth connectivity available across the country. The internet availability is also increasing rapidly. Having said all of this, please understand that the internet bandwidth available even in our institutions of higher learning is rather limited. In fact, it is said that the best uh, bandwidth is actually a train full of CDs and DVDs being taken from one place to another. That is because you take your own engineering college, you would have excellent local area network in which hundreds of students can pile on to a local server connected on a high bandwidth uh, LAN or WAN. However, when it comes to access to internet, the entire college might have 10 Mbps, 20 Mbps, 50 Mbps, 100 Mbps kind of link, which is completely inadequate if you have 4,000, 5,000 students all wanting to do something simultaneous. IIT systems are lucky, we have a 1 Gbps bandwidth and even then we fall short of the bandwidth. So till such time that the internet bandwidth increases significantly and the access is provided to every working student from a college, we may have to depend on the local area network bandwidth. What it means is that very good quality content may be available on national servers including clouds, but they must be replicated in local servers for people to easily access those content. The access amounts to providing affordable devices to the learners. Now, most institutes of higher learnings have servers and PCs on local area network, as I mentioned. We have conducted successful pilots with affordable access devices. Uh, many of you would have heard and seen Akash. We have more than 300 Akash uh, sort of uh, centers, which are actually many of them are our own remote centers. And if you are working from a remote center, you should be able to see Akash tablets. In fact, many of us have used these tablets to conduct online quizzes and so on. 
the affordable tablets need to become available to all the people commercially. Government is taking some steps to make these access devices. They are now taking the form of netbook computers. Professor Kannan again is spearheading this effort. About 5,000 rupees a netbook computer which runs Android as well as Linux is now available. We are testing that. Simultaneously, large clouds or server farms have been created, are being created. In fact, the National Mission Cloud is almost ready. Experimental release has happened. And we might soon be hosting our national MOOCs, our massive open online courses on this cloud. Here is an ex experiment that we did some time ago on affordable clicker devices. These are devices which we use for conducting online quizzes in the class. The first one was designed in about 700 rupees and the second one was designed and developed in about 1200 rupees. I have given dollar prices which are slightly inflated but these devices permitted us to conduct online quizzes. In fact, I recall uh, fondly that only when Professor Sahana Murthy came back and joined us, we did some initial meaningful experiments in conducting online quizzes using clicker devices. These have now been ported onto the Akash tablet. Here is an example of affordable engineering experiment. You would have heard of Arduino boards, which are about 35 to 40 dollar experimental boards, which are available in open source design. Our teams here under Professor Kannan Mautgalya have designed an Anuduino. Anu is the atom in Hindi. So Anuduino is a small or a micro version of Arduino board. Actually, the board is just this small. That's all. And this board houses a particular uh, LM35 sensor which can sense temperature. This is connected on a USB cable to the Akash tablet. The software which runs on this tablet is actually a temperature uh, ga data gathering and displaying software which can run on any Android tablet. The point that I am making is not only the tablet is affordable, but this entire gadget including the Arduino board, the sensor and the USB cable costs only 90 rupees. I would like to emphasize that engineering experiments which have been traditionally done using very costly equipment can be successfully replaced by much more affordable equipment without jeopardizing the essence of the experiment that is being conducted and that is being learned by the students. And I would urge you to think more innovatively on adopting such digital technologies for a variety of educational purposes. The Akash, as many of you may know, also runs Scilab. It runs on Android, it also runs on Linux, both of which are operating systems available on the Akash tablet as well as on the netbook computer. Just to emphasize the economic gains or the affordability, Scilab is actually a software which corresponds in functionality to the more popular commercial product called MATLAB, which is used by scientists and engineers all across the world. Many of our own teachers and students use them in educational institutions, but sadly, without bothering about the license, they just copy, which is a plagiarism, which is wrong. Those who need MATLAB must obtain a license properly by paying the fees and then use it. But otherwise, they are encouraged to use open source variant. Scilab practically permits everything that MATLAB does, and it being open source, it costs zero rupees. Anybody can download it on your machine and run it. We have ported it successfully on Android and Linux platforms on tablets. Here is a netbook device which we are experimenting with, as I said. Unlike an Akash tablet, it does not have a touch screen, but it has a keyboard. This keyboard facilitates students to input their assignments, their reports, etc., etc., much more easily than what a tablet does. Currently, it costs us about 5,000 rupees plus taxes which is still an affordable device as compared to any other laptop that we can. Incidentally, this runs full-fledged Linux. It has USB ports. You can actually connect a terabyte drive externally to this. You can connect it to uh, internet through Wi-Fi and or using a dongle, you can connect it to 3G or whatever service. We believe that these devices will herald a new era in using ICT effectively by the learners. You are all familiar with T10KT project. In fact, we are conducting this workshop under this project. We have established 300 remote centers and we are in the process of establishing more. 
as you know these are teacher training workshops in which up to 10000 teachers can be trained simultaneously in a subject it's a two week faculty development program interactive live lectures such as these are broadcast from iit bombay or iit kharagpur which are the two hubs and labs and tutorials are held at the remote center we have trained over 85000 teachers in this fashion so far and our mandate is to train 150000 teachers in another year and a half this is a map this is a slightly older map but these are our remote centers you can see they are spread across the country but there are few areas in the country where we still seek to establish more remote centers typically when we conduct a workshop two months before the main workshop such as this we actually collect all the workshop coordinators from different remote centers bring them to iit bombay this makes sense in any subject specific workshop because we want to ensure that the labs assignments tutorials which are done at the remote center in the afternoon in the main workshop are conducted with the same rigor and have the same quality as if they were being conducted in iit bombay so what we do is we collect all these workshop coordinators and make them go through a drill of a one week rigorous drill in which we conduct jointly the experiments lab sessions and tutorial sessions that would eventually be given out to all the participating teachers we have seen that this helps very much because different teachers teaching in different colleges have a slightly different notion of how a subject is being taught this kind of coordinators workshop brings everybody at the same pace we also exchange ideas about what is the syllabus that is being used in their colleges what is the exam pattern etc and we try to tell them the advantage of using the iit style of education where students are constantly challenged with tougher and tougher problems so that they live up to the challenge and learn more of course in the pedagogy workshop where this is not a regular subject that is being taught uh, we did not conduct this kind of coordinators workshop i believe we conducted only online workshop that is because the workshop coordinators you people and us all of us are roughly at the same page because pedagogy for using ict effectively is something completely new it is not that we have some experience in iit bombay but it is not that we have become experts so issues in pedagogy are still evolving all that we are attempting to do with this workshop for example is to share with you the learning that we have had through our experiments and urge you to do similar experiments at your place coming back to the coordinators workshop after the coordinators workshop the main workshop is held this typically shows the teachers at a remote center i have particularly liked this particular remote center because you see a large number of lady teachers participating in fact we have got kudos from many participants who said that being ladies it is impossible for us to leave our town and go to iit bombay or iit kharagpur or any such place for a two week workshop we could attend this workshop only because it is being organized in a remote center which is in my own town etc we are very happy to note that and that means a very large percentage of lady teachers who can otherwise not participate in such national workshops are enabled by using this technology so you can see the power of the technology being used even in these teacher training workshops we have started using online approach for t10kt workshops so some of these workshops are conducted in a mixed mode part of the workshop let's say for one week is done online the actual duration is about 5 to 6 weeks and then the other week is face to face in this particular instance also as you will notice we have three days of face to face interaction then we have an online activity and then again we have a concluding three days of face to face interaction we find that effectiveness is enhanced particularly for those participants who are serious meaning they seriously do the online portion of the work without which they will not be impacted or uh, benefited as much as they ought to we currently use moodle which does not scale beyond uh, 2000 uh, concurrent users we propose to use the swayam moocs platform which i'll describe shortly i digress a bit and i would like to share with you the grand challenges for engineering which were released a few years ago by national academy of engineers even i was not aware of these recently i participated 
in a delegation meeting of Indian National Academy of Engineers with the US National Academy, where the emphasis came on how these engineering challenges are going to be met by engineers and professionals in this century. And towards these, what steps are we taking to educate our students, engineering students, better? Let us look at these grand challenges very quickly. Making solar energy economical, providing energy from fusion, developing carbon sequestration methods, managing nitrogen cycle, providing access to clean water, restoring and improving urban infrastructure, advancing health informatics. Notice all of these are complex problems. There are 14 challenges. Let me list the remaining seven. Engineer better medicines. Reverse engineer the brain. This is the most uh, ambitious of the engineering challenges. Reverse engineering the brain to understand how brain functions so that we can better appreciate how even learning happens or how decision making happens, etc. Preventing nuclear terror. Securing cyberspace, an emerging important area. Enhancing virtual reality. I have written in bold the 13th grand challenge, which is advancing personalized learning. I will comment more on it later on in the, in the talk. But this is a grand challenge which is directly in the real of the educational processes. And we as teachers are fundamentally responsible for ensuring that we can solve this mystery and puzzle of advancing personalized learning. The last challenge is engineering the tools for scientific discovery itself. It is well known that major scientific discoveries could happen in the last century because the tools which were engineered to provide measurements, experimentation, etc., to further the scientific discovery. This process is expected to go on and, in fact, gather more steam in this century. As I said, I will comment on these challenges uh, or the nature of these challenges and how we approach these later in the talk. But just notice one thing. All these grand challenges which have been listed by the US National Academy of Engineers are multidisciplinary in nature. There is no challenge which says, I am an electrical engineering problem or I am a mechanical engineering problem or I am a civil engineering problem or I am a physics problem or I am an economics problem. I would like you to appreciate that when we discuss this later. Massive open online courses, many of you have heard and many of you would have participated. Indian learners participating in the global efforts, by the way, are about 20% of all the courses offered by EDX or Coursera or Udacity or any number of uh, new uh, players who have come in offering through global consortium of top universities such online courses. In India, the NPTEL certified course was run as an online course. About 1,500 students were certified through a supervised online examination. The course builder was used and the Google platform was used to run this course. IIT Kanpur, jointly with Commonwealth of Learning, have developed a platform and they have started offering some courses. Professor Prabhakar is leading the effort here. For the NPTEL, I believe Professor Mangal Sundar and others are leading this effort. Professor Prabhakar actually offered a course on MOOC on MOOCs. I mean, it's a massive open online course on massive open online courses. So how to, to do when you are register for these courses, how to learn, how to design these courses, etc. It's a very beautiful course. I would urge most of you uh, to actually go and look at the archived version of this course. It's very useful. IIT Madras is simultaneously working on QEEE. A platform is being developed. Uh, to integrate a view of Amruta University there. IIT Bombay has built a Bodhi tree platform, which was developed by my colleague, Professor Kameshwari. Uh, for the T10KT, uh, we actually used it in the computer networks course that she offered. We will be incorporating the features of this Bodhi tree platform. And of course, the common things about the IIT Kanpur work or anybody else's work into the larger effort, which we call Swayam. Swayam is the Indian name. It stands for Study Webs for Active Learning for Young Aspiring Minds. You can notice that we have used an American method of forming acronyms. First, we form an acronym and then figure out what should be the uh, long expansion of that name. Uh, but this does make sense. Uh, this Swayam is an Indian open source platform which is based on OpenEDX. 
We have, it has been built using Python and Django framework. And IIT Bombay has been working on this under T10KT project because our project review committee guided that we should start developing our own open source uh, large scale platform to use in T10KT at least. Now, this will cater to native languages and this will permit offering of blended MOOCs. I had written a paper, many of you may be aware of it. It will also be available for school education and for vocational training. So large scale national rollout will unfold very shortly. Before that, some major problems are being sorted out. These are the glimpses of Swayam, which is built on open EDX. You can see that this platform currently permits people to understand MOOCs, both in English and in Hindi. So this is a registration page in Hindi. We will soon be designing uh, the, a platform project has been approved under the national mission to IIT Bombay. It has not yet started. But over the next three years, we propose to make this platform completely amenable to Indian requirements and particularly catering to multiple Indian languages so that the content, if translated properly into different Indian languages, can be made available in the form of massive open online courses on this platform in any chosen Indian language that the learner chooses to use. There are several policy issues. Currently, the credits and marks are not recognized by universities and colleges, which insist that the students must appear for the normal examination, then only their grades would be recognized. If we can supervise online examination, and if local assignments and assessments can be conducted by the local teachers, then a MOOC grade can be accepted. This is largely the thesis that I have presented last year, and it is being accepted increasingly. Uh, you may soon find a blended MOOCs being accepted by the University Grants Commission and by the university. Once the credit recognition happens, then transfer of credits across universities, which is high on the agenda of the Ministry of Higher Education currently, as all of you know, and recognition of credits which are earned by learners who are actually not part of a university system today. So if I'm not a registered student, but I earn credits through MOOCs, would a university recognize these credits and give me a degree? Currently, open universities do that, but that too through their own brand of uh, teaching and learning and not through MOOCs. We believe a lot will happen now. These issues are being addressed currently through uh, various regulatory bodies. Let me very briefly describe MOOCs at IIT Bombay. We collaborate with open EDX community. China and France have been the early adopters. They have already rolled out their national MOOCs platforms. We have successfully used this platform for blended MOOCs locally in IIT Bombay. Uh, last year, we taught about 540 students of computer programming. My colleague, Professor Supratik, and I conducted this course. And we have excellent results uh, commensurate with what has been observed earlier by Professor Kannan Maudgalya, who used the uh, flip classroom, or Professor Sridhar Iyer and Sahana Murthy have done concrete experiments on how engagement of students increases. We are trying to build consistent multilingual framework, which still remains a challenge. Now, this may be of interest to you. Since Swayam launch has been delayed, it has been decided that IIT Bombay Extension Services will offer three online courses. These are the courses which were already offered to global learners on EDX. These, with their Hindi translation, will be available in subjects of computer programming, thermodynamics, and signals and systems. Now, this only means that many of the students who are studying these subjects in your colleges may benefit if they choose to, to attend these or to register for these. But more importantly, we are also simultaneously going to run three special T10KT workshops. These will be recognized workshops by IST. These workshops will be titled Effective Teaching and Mentoring of Learners in Computer Programming, in Thermodynamics, and in Signal Senses. We will be opening up these workshops only for those teachers who have successfully completed the three training workshops that we had earlier conducted in computer programming and thermodynamics from IIT Bombay and signals and systems from IIT Kharagpur. These three special workshops will soon be announced. I will be sending an email to roughly about 4,000, 5,000 teachers of each of these subjects who successfully completed that workshop. They will have an exciting opportunity to learn on how to teach a blended MOOCs course in their own colleges, plus 
how to mentor students on discussion forums in the online courses. So there will be a training workshop that will soon be announced for, for our participating teachers. If some of you have attended these workshops, uh, please start thinking about how uh, you would like to participate and contribute. I will be sending an email shortly to all the teachers. Advanced personalized training is something that was mentioned as one of the grand challenges. And as I said earlier, this is something which directly concerns us as teachers. This requires us to appreciate the way people learn because they don't learn the same way. Some people learn slowly, some people learn fast, some people have a better background, some people have an inadequate background, some people solve quizzes directly, some people are methodical, they go through the lessons, everything, everything. That means the current system which can only capture the symptom, that is the test score, does not tell us about how the people learn. An online platform on the other hand can capture the entire sequence of actions at which point a student did what is actually captured. Now this results in a very large amount of data. We already have got data from the global courses that we have offered. The MOOCs platform will continue to collect more such data. What is required is to do a heavy analytics of these event logs and this big data analytics which is an area for immediate attention will permit all of us to understand not just how an entire class behaves but how individual students behave while learning. Just to give an example, if there are 100 students who get 40 marks out of uh, in, a, in a paper whereas all others are getting 60 marks, we understand from this symptom that all these 100 students require special instruction. But what we attempt to do even through intelligent tutoring systems is all these 100 students are given the same extra material. Now while all of them might have got 40 marks, each of these 100 students might have completely different ways of learning. And this personalized training is not actually being personalized. It's being addressed to the entire group based only on symptom. That is they received 40 marks in their score. Imagine now if I know that these 40 marks were achieved by these 100 students in different ways of learning, then will I not be able to cater to these different ways by giving a personalized additional material to each student which may be different for different students and that might significantly enhance the learning of each individual student. We need to therefore create systems like an active data warehouse for an active educational data warehouse to get to this. Of course, there are a whole lot of uh, technological innovations and research involved. IIT Bombay is committed to do that. We will soon request any number of participating teachers in these workshops join hands with us in, in these major efforts. Educational animation is another important thing which can actually happen only through the ICT intervention. In a printed book, animation had no place. This is an area of great importance and relevance. You may want to visit a distillation column animated using Blender. Blender is an open source uh, animation software. This is a very good engineering experiment which cannot be explained even through a video. If you conduct a video because video will only show a distillation column externally. Whereas an animation shows the cross section and what happens inside a distillation column. Such educational animations are desperately required to be included in our digital content material as it goes online for the benefit of students. This you can also provide interactive animations. A lot of work is happening already on this. And, and therefore, this is an area in which I would like many of you to continue to participate. Uh, incidentally, Professor Sridhar Iyer uh, used to run a project called Oscar project. But now it has been superseded by the open source Blender movement. Those of you who are interested might want to participate in using Blender for animation. So there are a large number of collaboration opportunities between all of you, us, among smaller groups, among ourselves. First, to ensure content portability, that's a long-term thing. Many of you may be aware of SCORN, which was actually a, a standard which evolved about 15 years ago, much before online education. Its current version, Tin Can, looks promising. But currently, no online platform has any standardization for content. 
So if you design a course in one platform, you have to practically redesign it on another platform. There is no choice. I already talked about advanced personalized instructions. Huge amount of research collaboration and active experimental collaboration is possible. Last but not the least, the blended MOOCs for engineering education, including pedagogy and teacher training, are very, very important for us. These are something which are doable immediately. And the present workshop, in fact, is an, a serious attempt in furthering the last call. In the last five minutes, I would like to strongly suggest that our current engineering education, which is divided into different categories, such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, etc., etc., actually creates silos of education. I would like to suggest that these silos were created by us knowingly and that is because the human knowledge grows so fast in each of these areas that to do justice properly to a particular field, it was important to create a separate branch of that field. That is how the original engineering, which was essentially mechanical engineering, regarded as mother of all engineering, evolved into civil engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, and so on. In fact, engineering itself came out as an applied sciences thing. Please understand that the grand challenges which I had mentioned can be tackled by our future engineers whom we are currently training only when they understand to apply their mind for the multidisciplinary problem solving, which is unfortunately an experience which is completely lacking in our current education. More important than that, even when we teach a subject, we often do not relate the teaching of that subject to the entire dimension of the field itself. For example, when I am teaching data structures, when I am teaching databases, do I actually emphasize interesting things that are happening in the computer science and engineering and how to relate the learning that we do in this particular course with the larger one? Once you understand that, you will understand that you need to then relate it to problems in mechanical engineering, problems in electrical engineering, problems in aerospace engineering and so on. And more importantly, this is a realization I had recently where Professor Richard Miller actually outlined the true nature of these engineering challenges. He mentioned and, and its impact on the education. So let us look at what exactly are we doing and what exactly ought to be done. So let us look at engineering and science. Engineering and science actually define the feasibility of solving a problem. So what are the technologies that need to be used? How exactly I can create instruments, equipment, etc., etc., solve a problem? These all come from the scientific principles and are engineered into large systems. It is important because this is the crux of any problem solving in the real world where engineering and science is required. But please also appreciate that simultaneously for the real world to actually work on the solutions and to adopt these solutions, you require commerce and finance. What commerce and finance do is they establish viability. You might build a solution. Imagine an Akash tablet which was designed with all kinds of fancy contents and so on, but it costed 10 lakh rupees. It would be completely useless. Now, affordability can be obtained through engineering innovation, but the need for the affordability is established by proper financial analysis and commercial viability. That is why viability is established by commerce and finance. I mentioned this to emphasize that in our engineering and science education, we hardly talk of these things. We have probably one course, one elective in industrial economics and probably one course in management, which is done very perfunctorily by people and generally ignored by almost all students and teachers. But it is extremely important when it comes to large scale problem solving in the society. And then the third dimension which is equally important. Humanities and Arts. 
what do these fields bring in for the grand challenge problems to be solved they bring in the desirability as engineers and scientists we appreciate that any technology is actually a dual edged sword it can be used for positive things it can be used for negative things the same technology works for giving us energy the same technology can work as a nuclear disaster in terms of bombs why we use a particular technology what for we use it what is the desirability of using that technology is actually brought about by the thinkers of humanity by the exposition of arts unfortunately again we do a mere lip service in our engineering curriculum for these important topics so if i were to draw three circles representing the focus and therefore the attention span of the learners in each of these i will probably get a circle which is science and technology or engineering and science circle another circle which is probably commerce and finance and a third circle which is humanities and arts i would like to submit that what we are looking for is to enhance this intersection in terms of the understanding the appreciation in the minds of our students and the learning that goes along with it that in order to solve the grand challenges facing the world in the 21st century they need to truly understand and appreciate almost all the dimensions of all these three spheres and not limit themselves to only one sphere this is where i would seek your kind collaboration contribution joint efforts to try we can demolish the silo but to try to bring in as much knowledge as much understanding as much appreciation of these other circles into your education to begin with i would urge all of you to tell your students at least the names of these 14 grand challenges indian national academy is in the process of identifying some 8 or 10 challenges of these and add one or two more which are relevant to india that list might come out in the month of february this year but what is important is not only all of us teachers understand these challenges but we actually spread the message to all our students through a very dedicated one hour lecture saying these are going to be the challenges in front of all of us so while you might be studying civil engineering computer science or it or electronics or chemical or whatever please understand that you will be participating in small or big way in attempting to solve these larger problems and in order to appreciate and solve these problems properly you need to understand all these three spheres so please remember that we emphasize to our students that while we teach them feasibility they must appreciate viability and they must also appreciate desirability that's all i wanted to share in the beginning session the rest of the workshop is going to be uh, well i would say rather path breaking for some of you because many of you may not have used technology in in your educational processes but let me tell you without ict there is no chance for our country to reach out to those 352 million students who are yet waiting none of them have come to the college yet they will all come to the college many of them will come to engineering and it will be our job to use their appropriate technology and appropriate pedagogy to make them the most effective professionals for the 21st century thank you so much